Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a really interesting problem called the elevator problem. Something that confounds the students quite a bit. What is your apparent weight on an elevator when the elevator is moving upward, downward, accelerating upward, accelerating downward, whatever the situation may be. So let's say that, for example, there's a 150 pound person standing in an elevator on a bathroom scale so they can check their weight and the elevator is not moving and not accelerating. So just perfectly standing still. The weight on the scale would show 150 pounds. What would the weight show on the scale if the elevator is moving upward, downward, accelerating upward, accelerating downward? Let's find out. Well, first of all, understand that the weight or the force on the scale is going to be equal to the weight of the person, mg, which is the same thing right there, plus or minus ma. In other words, the apparent weight caused by the elevator accelerating upward or downward. So this term here is only present if there's an acceleration. If there's no acceleration in the elevator, the weight of the person would be mg and that's what the bathroom scale would show. So in the cases over here where the acceleration is zero, even though the elevator is moving upward here and moving downward over here, as long as there's a constant speed, the weight over here would also be 150 pounds. No difference weight equals 150 pounds. There's only a change in the weight on the scale if the elevator is actually accelerating upward or downward. So in the top three frames, the, acceleration, the, the elevator is moving upward, and here the elevator is accelerating upward. Here accelerating, the acceleration is negative because the elevator is slowing down and coming to its final destination. Over here, the elevators are moving downward, constant speed here, here from a standing position to a moving position, so accel accelerating downward, which is negative acceleration, and here the elevator is coming to its destination, it's slowing down, meaning there's a positive acceleration because it's moving in a negative direction. So what would be the weight that the scale shows? Well, in this case, it would be the weight is equal to the mg plus the ma. You would appear to be heavier because not only does the scale have to hold your weight up against gravity, it also has to push you upward at the acceleration A. And so therefore, this would be equal to 150 pounds plus the ratio of A over G times 150 pounds. In other words, if the acceleration of the elevator is as much as G, which would be quite an elevator, then the person would appear to weigh 300 pounds. Conversely, over here, when the elevator is slowing down, then the weight here would be equal to 150 pounds minus 150 pounds times the ratio of A over G. Again, let's say that the elevator can slow down so quickly that A is equal to G, which is in minus 9.8 meters per second square or minus 32 feet per second square, then the person would temporarily be weightless as the elevator slows down. So, Usually elevators don't slow that, down that fast because, you know, it would be quite a sensation to feel weightless at that moment. But that's how you would do that. Over here, when the elevator is accelerating downward, for the moment, you would feel like as if you're lighter. So the weight here is equal to 150 pounds minus the person's weight times the ratio of A over G. Let's say that a is 10% of G, then this would be 15 pounds, and the person would feel 15 pounds lighter as the elevator is beginning to move, and so beginning to accelerate in a downward direction. But when the person reaches the final destination, the elevator is slowing down with the acceleration upward, then we have the weight is equal to 150 pounds, plus 150 pounds times the ratio of A over G. Again, if the acceleration, the slowing down of the elevator in a downward motion is 10% of G, then this would be 15 pounds and the person would feel as if they're 165 pounds and that's what the scale would show. So this gives you kind of a nice little overview of how you look at an elevator problem and hopefully that helps you work out the problems like that.